There are currently 161 inmates within the Department of Correctional Services, accommodated in 243 correctional centers and 46 management areas spread across six regions. The goal of the department is to usher a humane, efficient and effective correctional system that complies with national and international standards that is dependent on ensuring a highly motivated, properly incentivized and capacitated staff members. To empower offenders with skills, education and fresh attitudes to turn away from crime, break the circle of re-offending, unlock potential and create real opportunities for change. In June 2015, Zakaria Mudise was appointed National Commissioner when the department was not transformed and was dominated by white males. It was fraught with serious challenges, including a worrisome trend of qualified audits, a disarray and a lack of credibility of records. For us to be able to, to meet our own set objectives uh, that we set ourselves, but also through uh, our new act, Triple One of 1998, but also the expectations of our parliamentarians. Correctional services had to undergo a major transformation. Remember, we were a prisons department before, where ours was only to incarcerate uh, and warehouse people. Uh, right now, we have changed that to rehabilitation, development, and correction. Now, for us to be able to do that, we also need systems that can assist us to do that kind of job. And therefore, for us, uh, it was then important that we develop a, 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 an inmate system that would enable us to capture information of a person as he is admitted and when he is released. We had then started with our admission and release system that only talked to who is it that we have admitted today and uh, where does it come from and so forth. And then on the release date we'd also say person X has now been released from correctional services. We have now started with a new system which we call Inmate uh, Integrated Management System uh, which will give us a single view of everything that pertains to a particular person. Be able to see when the person was admitted, what programs he has attended, and whether he is moving on his offender rehabilitation path and as to whether we are keeping to his sentence plan. And, and that would make correctional services a much more efficient uh, department. Uh, importantly, uh, because uh, the inmate system uh, is also honed on the integrated justice system. Uh, we shall then be able to <coughs> track an offender from police cells to courts as to correctional services and when that person has been released. Uh, so it will enable us. It will be a system that, that, that interoperate with other systems like the one of the police, the justice department and home affairs. And, and with that, we believe that we shall then be able to do our work much more better, much more efficient, and, and, um, and uh, according to our own set standards. So far, we did award a contract in that regard, and uh, we are currently uh, going live at uh, uh, Hoshimampuru, uh, the remand facility, which is called Local, which I think uh, Logan can take you through to just go and have a look at what is it all about, because once you put your finger on the uh, system, uh, every information about you will then come up. When are you supposed to go to court, whether you have bail or not. It will help us tremendously with identification, but also with offender movement. Because uh, from time to time, there are these offenders that who are supposed to go to court who does not answer on his name. So we'll exactly know at which cell is this person, and uh, when is he supposed to go to court? Is he the right person that has paid bail? And so forth. I think um, the system, uh, as we see it, it is going to assist us a great deal. Uh, once we are done at Khoshimampur, local will then roll it out to Johannesburg. You'd know that Johannesburg is one of our bigger institutions uh, where we're having over 4,000 uh, remand uh, offenders. 
And once we have done that, we have tested it, it is working, then we'll roll out to all of our correctional centers in the Republic. Uh, that's, that's where we are right now, with the inmate integrated management system. The Hossi Mamburu Correctional Center is piloting the rollout of the Integrated Inmates Management Systems, a landmark e-governance tool that entails automation of operations. Mr. Modisa's work is cut out for him to drive ambitious turnaround strategies aimed at breathing a new lease of life into the country's correctional systems. What happens is they track the vents, the vents comes with our our client, our in, the inmates, and then they they offload them. We search them. Uh, there are uh, officials who are searching there, and then after the searching, we create. They, they come with a paper called a body receipt. This body receipt number eleven. So when this inmate gets here, some of them went out from to court from here. So we have their information, and there are those who will be coming from court for the first time to our facility. And then when they come here, we, we give them a, a registration number. They come, they come with a warrant that will tell us uh, how long are we detaining them. And then when they come, they get here, we check the warrant, what information is written on the warrant, the name and surname and the age of the person. So. There's a number, we call it, it's a registration number, uh, we call it a prison number as well, that we give them, that this, this is the number that makes uh, an inmate unique. We identify them with this number and then we capture the, 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 their fingerprints against this number and the photo of the inmate against this number. And then we update the why we capture the warrant all the information that the, 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 the judge have written on the warrant, we capture it as it is on our system. We have a system, different types of, uh, of, 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 of warrants there. J7, so this one came as a J7. So we capture the information and then the, normally when a new inmate is new, the warrant will tell us because it will have, it will have an, uh, uh, the image details personal details at the courts they don't capture they don't take the id numbers of the inmate because for other reasons uh, maybe the inmate says does he know the id number or he doesn't have an id because these are inmates we know what happens with them with the truth they stay away as, as much as they can from the truth and then they will write the minimum information about the inmate what what is actual age, the one that you tell, you tell the judge there, is born in 1980, which date, and then we capture those, and then that one assists us in grouping this inmate, so that when we have minors, we know where to put minors, and where to put a certain age group. And then the other minimal information that the, the judge captures at the court is, who's the next of king for that inmate? and then capture that information as well. Just in case if something happens to the inmate, we know who to contact. And then from the system, when the inmate comes in, if it's new, we will capture the, 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 the photo, we'll take a photo and the, and, the, and, the, and the fingerprint of the inmate. And then we'll give them the registration number. So we have a camera that takes the, 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 the photos and the biometric scanner and then we capture everything. With the projects that we are running within the correctional services, we have quite a number of projects that we are currently um, using or running to improve the whole performance information within the end reporting structures within the department. We started first with the upgrading of the network infrastructure, uh, where we said that we have old and dilapidated dilapidated uh, infrastructure from, you know, your normal cabling, uh, basic cabling to improving and upgrading the switching and also the connectivity that we're using with CETA. Um, so we first migrated 
from the normal network that uh, we were using at CETA to the virtual private network. That's the first thing that we did. Then we upgraded the bandwidth, uh, which is also part of the infrastructure, and currently we doing the cabling and the switching. The other project that we are embarking on within the department on performance information is the enterprise architecture. So basically the enterprise architecture is where you are building, uh, sort of creating a structure of the department in terms of ICT. So where, uh, which sites are running which ICT um, technology and which sites um, are running which equipment. So that's what we call it enterprise architecture, which also includes the improvement or includes the um, documentation of the business processes. So as a department, we are what uh, technology basically driven and the business processes and the policy, we are basically policy driven as a department. So the business processes are the outlay or the outline of what the policy says, how we should do our work. So basically that's where we are. We started with that project, which also will be able to document and automate those business processes and how we are measuring ourselves against those business processes within the department. And within that, we have seen that we have um, performance information doesn't only start with uh, the business process um, improvement, but also the automation. The automation of the business processes in full, especially the core business uh, processes, comes with the what we call integrated inmate management system. So within the integrated inmate management system, we look at, for example, the business process of admission of the offender. So the admission of an offender, if you look at the, the current processes, it says that when an offender comes in as a first offender, you need to have the warrant of detention um, that says that you need to detain this individual. Then after the warrant, within the warrant, you have a name, say name, you have contact details of that offender, uh, you have your fingerprint of that offender identifying that is the same person that has been taken from court to our correctional centers. And those processes are currently manual processes. So with the EAMS, what we're aiming is to automate that process. We have, started, we have started within the department with that automation, meaning that the warrant that the offender is coming up with will take that as paper-based as it is and capture it on the system with the name, say name, personal details of that offender, um, the addresses of that offender, the next kin and all those things. Then we take a picture of that offender, then we take the fingerprints of that offender. So we compare the fingerprints that we have taken manually to the fingerprints that we have taken uh, automatically and we capture that on the system. That's the admission process. And within the admission process, there will be other processes like your health uh, of that offender and all those basic things that as per human rights that we have to do. So all that information, that's where we're capturing it. And, you know, obviously with the manual process, it has its own faults. Um, you have issues where maybe the offenders at the same time, they swap identity. Because after they've been there, if you have not taken their photo and you're only relying on the uh, manual fingerprinting process, they can exchange information then you find yourself, when you're calling a name, the person doesn't respond, or the wrong person responds to uh, that name. Like, if you call Skosana, at that point of time, there might be five Skosanas in that group. So with the automated process, what we're trying to do is you using your automated fingerprint to identify yourself, as a that individual because we have taken your photo we have taken your fingerprint so the system will retrieve and compare the fingerprint that has been taken with the identity and the photo that 
uh, with your with yourself with the photo that we have. So it also eliminates that process where you are going to release to court an incorrect individual. So you need to make sure that the fingerprint and the photo identifies the, the individual. So in that way, it's going to improve the identification and the verification of the offenders. It's also going to relieve the officials in terms of uh, making errors or releasing the wrong people or paying bail for the wrong person that has been identified. The, so the aspects of the system will be uh, admission, uh, will be detention, because within the detention you also need to know um, what are the rehabilitation programs that the offenders uh, and the correctional programs that the offenders are set to attend within the incarceration period of that offender. You'll have your health management where obviously as per human rights we need to know your health status as well as registering of any other incidents that happens with yourselves as an individual as well as registering any other death that might happen within the environment, including your uh, status, what, what kind of food, the feeding that we uh, have to do within the, the system.